everybody. I'm recording this on Thursday afternoon, so before the Europa League matches are played, but I won't post it until Saturday morning for the simple reason that I think tomorrow morning I will talk about the Europa League results. You get, of course, a jersey, the Europa League jersey review in the evening, and you know, um, I think it's not that pressing of a topic, but it's an interesting topic. I want to talk, want to talk about how can we make the Champions League and maybe by extension the Europa League a little bit better. I have been thinking about all this for a while and then I thought, yeah, let's record it while it's still fresh in my mind. Uh, while I have a lot of time because the traffic driving home is awful. It takes me twice as long to get home than if there was no traffic. I know it's not the world's worst commute, um, it just bugs me what the local politics are doing or missing for decades and now we have to fix it all at once and don't get me started, I think it's going to be another video. <clears throat> I realize I don't have much of a voice uh, and I have not been talking a lot today except in the morning. Well, um, how can we make a Champions League better? I think there are some obvious changes and some that are a little bit more adventurous than I have. I think my first obvious change is get the seating back to where you seat the clubs by their club coefficient. Uh, more even groups are definitely desired. Why? I really think or maybe not. Uh, let's uh, think about it quickly. I'm uh, especially thinking about the uh, uh, group with Liverpool, Napoli, PSG and Red Star Belgrade versus uh, the other group uh, that's played yesterday with uh, Lok Moscow, who was the top seed, uh, Schalke, Galatasaray and Porto. Porto was the, the second seed, I think, in that group. And if I compare those two groups, there is no comparison. One is super attractive and one great team will go away. One is less attractive and we'll have two of these teams go in the second phase. Porto, I can probably imagine. The others are probably decent teams, but they're not... Neither of them I would put on one level with the uh, top three of the other group. Uh, and I know Porto has been eliminating Italian teams on a regular basis, so they maybe have a shot, but I, the others, no, no, absolutely not. So I find this a little bit of a travesty that, you, yes, you, it's a Champions League, you want to give maybe the champions of the leagues a little bit of a bonus. But I don't know, this it seems to be going too far for me. and. I honestly don't like it. I would even take, I even would make the seating a little bit more interesting, but more on that uh, later. Uh, now we can talk about one part of seating. Uh, you know, do it by the league. You know, I, I, I don't know if they're still doing it. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. How the club coefficient is usually compu was computed that it's half the team's performance and half the league's performance, which made some sense to me, honestly, uh, because if you have for the first time qualified, let's say, um, let's say Kievo makes it out of um, Serie A into the Champions League, similar to Hoffman, they don't have a great club record, but what Kievo has, they have the bonus coming from the Italian league. So, for that reason, I think they would probably deserve a little bit a better rating. But then I think maybe they, they, are, they are still doing something like that because Inter has not been in European play for a long time and they were a fourth seed, which is frankly also ridiculous. I think uh, you have to look a little bit into how, how do we do, do the coefficients. I always thought that the UEFA coefficients, even for national teams, are a little bit more reasonable overall then uh, at least the former FIFA ranking, we have to see how the new FIFA uh, ranking is uh, working out. But in the end, uh, it's also often a little bit messy. And yeah, I found Inter in pot four 
to be a rich. Uh, same thing as I found Lok Moscow, Import 1, absolutely a rich. So for that reason, I think there has to be done something. Uh, the second thing that I would get rid of is the country ties. Um, maybe in the group stage mix it up, but I think what you do is you kind of um, limit yourself a little bit in the group uh, constellations. I personally wouldn't mind if, let's say, uh, Liverpool and Manchester City end up in the same group. Uh, you could even go f uh, further, don't have necessarily a draw, uh, but assign the groups, you know, first team first, and to really go like a tennis roster fill in the groups according to that ranking. Uh, I know that the draw probably gives them television money, so they're not going to do away with it. But then, yeah, that's one way of doing it. Um, but at least I would get rid of the country ties. Uh, the latest in the round of 16, I really don't like that they have that, you know, if you, that even in the second round, uh, yet two teams from the same country cannot play each other and we had last year the situation that there was a more than 50% chance that Barcelona will play Chelsea because there were five, I think there were five English teams in there or something like that. It was a really weird constellation that uh, there was a substantial chance and we got Barcelona against Chelsea because of the, all the other options and that I don't think is in the spirit of the game. Um, I also think you could do it a little bit like the World Cup. Uh, I also don't necessarily like, especially that in the quarterfinals you frequently have rematches from the group stage. I think that, or as Sam Assam sometimes there, I find, although to a lesser degree, at least I feel it that way, uh, but might, might be. Uh, if you do it World Cup style, to have a draw determines the rest of the tournament. Yes, it loses some television money because we don't have the draw procedure, but I think it would be a little bit fairer and I would even make it if you um, if you don't want to have this with the country ties and, and whatever, I would seed the groups then. Uh, that you know, the stronger the team with the uh, strongest group one seed plays against uh, then the one with the lowest and so on. Something like that. There can be figured out that you figure out, yeah, this is a strong group, this is a weak group, so this will be paired and da, 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 da. something like that. I think would be, or, or maybe even make a draw that group A is then drawn to group G and whatever and just something like that. And you could do that even afterwards. That uh, maybe yeah, something like that. And just, I don't want to have, I mean, I am a little bit of a burnt child there because I remember in the 11-12 season when Milan played already Barcelona in the group stages. At, at, at that time, Barcelona was the one team that Milan really didn't want to play because they were so much better um, and they never had a real chance of beating Barcelona. And then in the quarterfinals, you get Barcelona again and um, no, doesn't seem right to me. Uh, get rid of country ties, but make sure the teams from the group stage don't face each other again. I think that's possible. And I think it uh, also, we don't want to see that many rematches. A rematch in the final, great. But before that, I think we want to have some mix up. So that those are seeding related things uh, that I find could make the Champions League better. Um, I'm not going to mention anything of the type that, you know, uh, make the Champions League more even by distributing money or, you know, put even more of the big leagues in. I want that, I understand and I actually want that uh, there are teams from actually as many different countries as possible in, in a way, because what makes the Europa League in a way so interesting when you, they are looking at it, into it. I mean, it's an unwieldy construct, but there is so, so many teams from so many different leagues uh, that wouldn't play each other. I loved it. I really loved it. 
I also don't get why um, Milan is a group with Olympiakos and Betis, which I think is a really tough group. And then there are other groups that are a little bit easier. But uh, okay, seeding procedures. I think there's something great in there. Um, I don't want to introduce the second group stage that we had um, for a few seasons. I think up until the 2002-3 season. That was the first one. That, that was the last one with the second group stage. Um, I think it was running for four seasons. It just inflates the whole thing too much. You get too many games. I saw the reasoning behind it. It generates, of course, more money for the clubs. It was not unattractive because then in the quarterfinal you really had a nice setup. But I understand the concern for playing that many games and for that reason I'm not uh, that much into it. And I also have to have to say the second group stage was very often not as exciting because it was played right in the dead end of the season. You know, you had only... Uh, there were some played in... Uh, late December and some were played in taxi drives. and then in February and you know this is exactly the time of the season when there's when teams are either you know certain teams especially Central Europe are approaching a winter break or still are in winter break uh, the big league teams are also, this is kind of the time where you have to do cup comp competition. So the second group stage, and then it was even broken up uh, um, January, February, um, because it, European play is not featured during that time. So that was not the uh, best idea, just for that reason, although in principle it sounded like a great idea. No, um, what I want to do is I get, want to get even more spirit of the old European Cup in there and the big spirit for me was the knockout ties. Now with home and away games. Now we fortunately have this already in the second round and that's, I think this made the Champions League more interesting. I think that's a good thing. But I want to introduce this to the group stage as well. I understand we have a group stage, but the group stage is still this was a new thing and I never really thought this is done to its best potential. What I would propose is, and we have this now on match days 3 and 4, that you have always um, home and away ties between the two teams that are involved. And um, so, say I've taken out a Tottenham Barcelona uh, game that on day 1 and day 2, you have first uh, Tottenham against Barcelona, then Barcelona against Tottenham, then the next one you would play Barcelona Inter, Inter Barcelona, and then PSV, Barcelona, uh, Barcelona, PSV. So you have always the home and away fixtures together. Um, and I would even say you give not points on the individual games played, but on the tie. So uh, the winner of the home and away series use away goals rule all and all that kind of stuff like you do in the knockout stage gets the three points should it go to overtime i suggest every team gets a point and then the winner of overtime and the penalty shootout gets an extra point i would love to see that because that puts the focus right there i the one thing I don't like about the groups is the only time that you get that you have really now an accurate picture. Who is the better team at this very moment is in matches 3 and 4 because they play each other within two weeks. Uh, where Yes, there can be some variations, but it's not that big. But uh, the teams that played yesterday, and let's stick with Tottenham against uh, Barcelona, uh, they meet on match day 6. Now is the beginning of October. This will be at the beginning of December. That's two months later. So much can change there, and then you know they use the tiebreaker um, duel against each other. It just doesn't seem right, especially since at that time Barcelona may well have qualified and Tottenham didn't. What you would also get rid of, in my opinion, is a lot of bad rubber games on match day six, maybe even match day five. Uh, it would be possible that after four games a team is qualified, uh, but it's not. I don't think it's as easy. 
Yes, you would have maybe more dead rubber games on the even match days because you know if a uh, very strong or very weak team, Paris Saint Germain, Red Star Belgrade, for instance, or Roma Pilsen, let's take Roma Pilsen, uh, where one really destroys the other, then yeah, uh, this doesn't. Uh, the return match is often pointless. However, you could still do it and that individual matches count uh, for UEFA points. So there is at least still a little bit riding on it and that could work, I guess. Uh, but to me, and count the goal differential of the two games together, you know, you can have still everything the same, just you give three points, whoever wins the tie. Uh, if I repeat myself, if it goes to overtime, each team gets a point and the winner after overtime or a penalty shootout gets the, an extra point. I personally would love to see this inst instituted. I even would go further in order to make it a little bit more interesting. And now here, here we need smart seating. Uh, that's why my first point comes in. But I would say uh, on match day one, you want to have some evenish match matchups. Let the one team play the three team and let the two team play the four team. Match day two, there you want to have your marquee matchup. Or the, no, not match days, it's three and four. Uh, one and two versus three and four. Leave the two versus three matchup that might decide the, who advances to the last uh, game day and also put a little bit more pressure on the teams by having the uh, one versus four matchup last. I personally would love to see it exactly instituted this way. Um, it would add more excitement for the two home and away matches and I think it would keep the spirit of European competition alive and with the point system that I suggested I think there is something in there that could potentially work very 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 well um, I think it will eliminate a lot of dead rubber matches I already see there as a big gem that's the one road where I always hope to go in go through fast and no it's not going so this is my biggest suggestion to make the Champions League better keep a little bit more of the old European Cup spirit by introducing home and away ties. I think this would be great. I absolutely would love to see this. I think every other change I would not necessarily change too much in the setup of you know uh, how many teams are in there. I think that's um, I think that I didn't like it but they did the right thing there so for that reason I would almost keep it that way. And yeah I cannot think at the moment of many more changes. Uh, maybe I already said it. Uh, use the Europa League to make kind of an almost a real double elimination tour tournament. If you get eliminated at the group stage in the Europa League, uh, in the Champions League, you go in the next round. Uh, uh, you go into the knockout stage for the Europa League. But then I would have this continue for the differing uh, stages, maybe up until the quarterfinal. Um, I think it would make, you know, you want to keep the good teams around in a way. Of course, uh, what you would do is you would ensure that since the Europa League uh, winner also gets the Champions League spot, uh, this eliminates basically the chances of smaller teams because, of course, we know that teams that come from the Champions League and the Europa League are usually winning the Europa League. So. Not sure if I'm uh, the biggest fan of this setup, but overall I could imagine doing that. And I think you have the space because you the second round of the Champions League, that's maybe another thing. This is a little bit too bloated. You play this over four weekends um, and then it all goes relatively fast. And you have the Europa League where you go from 64 teams to eight teams on four weekends. It's a little bit unwieldy the whole thing and the one is huge and the other one is just um, stretching it out a little bit too much so I think this could also be a little bit trimmed together 
and could lead to something good. But yeah, the Champions League remains, in my opinion, the premier competition, soccer competition in the world. Uh, the drama that served up, yes, it would be nice. It would be really, 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 really nice if we would see a little bit more variation in the clubs on top. Yep, so those are my thoughts. I think the biggest thing that I would want to see instituted is really um, the home and away series for the group stage. That, I think this would be great, wonderful, and give some additional excitement to the group stage. And actually, there's a very clear match plan attached to that too. Let me know if you have any other ideas. Uh, I talked to this today at lunch. Um, a friend of mine, a colleague, friend, suggested we should do it like they did in um, uh, indoor soccer in Austria for a while, where after every minute a player comes off, he said, well, maybe if you play 30 minutes, after every five minutes a player comes off or reduce the players in overtime. I personally don't like that much. The one thing that I would do is, uh, and maybe the Champions League would be the, would be a great testing ground. If, if it goes to penalty, although we don't have that many penalty shootouts, to be honest. Don't get rid of the away goal rule. Um, I would maybe get rid of the... Let's talk about that. I, I have more ideas. The away goal rule. I, I find the away goal rule a great dramatic thing yes it might not be 100% fair because you know the first games are usually less uh, lower scoring the second ones are usually a little bit more high scoring but what it provides it always provides a decider and um, of course the idea was initially that if you have the away goal rule, that in the first leg you actually force the away team to be a little bit more on the offensive and uh, you get now the opposite, that the home team is a little bit uh, less offensive maybe. But on the other side, they're playing at home. I know that a nil-nil at home is not a bad result and that's probably a downside of this uh, away goal rule but um, it's also very hard to play for a nil nil and then go away so i honestly wouldn't necessarily touch the away goal rule except for one option and that is in overtime i think in overtime i always find it a little bit deflating if then the away team scores the goal and suddenly they have a huge advantage yes the home team plays at home and this is generally seen as an advantage but I'm not sure if you played for 90 minutes already there I think don't I would not go for the away goal I gotta be honest with that it seems it probably will keep matches longer interesting if there's no away goal rule in place in overtime uh, I Take an example because I saw it, it was the last time where, 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 where I thought a goal basically killed off a game that otherwise might not have been that way. Uh, when Salzburg played as Marseille in the semi final last year, uh, Salzburg uh, had made good, uh, was lost the first game 2 0, then won at home 2 0. It was overtime and I think three or four minutes before the end Marseille scores the away goal. At that moment Salzburg needs to score two goals at home um, to advance. Yes, we didn't get a penalty shootout, but those three or four minutes uh, nowadays teams, especially at that stage, are so adept at keeping games tight and to not allow those two goals anymore uh, in those situations and uh, the team that has to score already spent probably so much energy that it just doesn't, didn't feel right. I think Marseille probably would have won this even without uh, the away goal rule, but the away goal rule totally killed this game off. And so I thought, yeah, 
get rid maybe of the Awago rule in overtime. Uh, and then when it goes to a penalty shootout, I will do it like a tennis tie break. Um, I know the World Cup provides all the evidence that don't start first, although every other study that I've read says go first. It's a reflex. Maybe there's... Uh, and this is something that we have to grow with up. By, by now everyone knows going first is an advantage because if you go ahead, the other team always has to play catch up. That's an advantage. But maybe uh, it makes players so self-assured of themselves that they think, oh yeah, we can go ahead, whatever. Uh, that I leave to some uh, more studies, psychologically as well as mathematically. I still believe that uh, going first in a penalty shootout gives you a sick. There was, there have been studies, uh, gives you a 60% chance of winning. And I guess the World Cup has just been unlucky. This is an unlucky streak that can happen. I mean, 60-40 is not that much of a discrepancy. So I would go to the tiebreak system in tennis, meaning um, you flip-flop the order of the shooters uh, every other time. So you start, let's say, home goes first. So we have home, then two from the away team, then two from the home team, two from the away team, and so on. Therefore, uh, the nice thing there is that the burden switches every single uh, at every round, and I think it would make it fairer. They are testing this, I think, at the youth level, youth national team level. I'm not sure how often this has already happened, but I would like to see this instituted. They had a similar situation in the tennis tie break. We also, for a time, they uh, made it alternating, and then they made the current rule, and suddenly it's completely uh, neutral and. All even so um, why not do it in soccer as well when they can do it in tennis I think soccer should be able to do that too so uh, those were two more things that I think could make the champion not necessarily the Champions League better but fairer and I would love to see that the Champions League would institute would be used to do some forward thinking. Get of course rid of the additional assistance and in, in, introduce VAR. This is a no-brainer. I haven't even thought about it. I have thought about um, uh, format-wise, but yes, VAR is desperately needed, especially after the what happened to PSV Eindhoven. I mean, uh, absolute disgrace what happened there, uh, and it happens every year. Uh, pick every year, any year, and you can find at least two or three games where the referees just were weak. Um, by the way, I don't think that um, the Real Madrid Juventus quarterfinal from last year would qualify for that one. It was a soft penalty, but even under bar, this penalty would have stood. So. The way VAR is instituted, we see a clear uh, pattern these days. and. I wish that FIFA would follow more the lines of what Serie A is doing and maybe even La Liga is doing. Uh, but other than that, I think VAR is is a great thing to have. Uh, it also, I think red cards are down because of wherever there's VAR, there are much less red cards because players are much smarter because they know the referee uh, will. Or can have a look at it so you cannot get away with everything and there's cameras everywhere of course in smaller leagues where you don't have cameras everywhere that's a different story and I think this is the one thing that speaks or will always speak against VAR um, that you know it is a disadvantage in smaller leagues because there's an additional cost and this needs to be covered by UEFA probably or somehow there need to be some stipends given that VAR can work effectively uh, on every pitch in Europe, whether it is Wembley or it is somewhere in Astana. Well, Astana is probably they have quite a high-tech arena there. And what we saw in Russia, so maybe let's go somewhere in the Balkans or, you know, let's say Belarus or whatever. Just smaller leagues. Well, Let's not go Eastern Europe, let's, let's not go Stereo Cups, let's say. Whether it is Wembley or whether it is San Marino, it needs to be worked everywhere the same. And that's the difficulty that I face. Okay.
Now I've been talking a lot and I'm actually through the worst of the traffic and I think I put quite some ideas out there. Again, the home and away series in the group stage, this is my, the main thing that I want to push for. Let me know what you think about this idea, whether you have any ideas of how to improve the current format of the Champions League, uh, how do you see the away goals rule, all the things that I've been talk, talking about, whether you like uh, the seeding or not. Uh, just let me know your thoughts. I actually want to write a blog post on this too, because uh, I think this deserves spreading. I wrote in 2013 how to improve the draw procedure for the World Cup and yeah, they didn't do it for the 2014 World Cup, but suddenly at the 2018 we had the fair draw procedure, taking all the credit for that. <laughs> okay. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Let me know about any improvements or changes that you would like to do. Uh, if you like uh, to see more videos like these, subscribe to this channel and I will talk to you soon. Bye.